The courts of a country should not be the places where resolution of disputes begin. They should be the places where disputes end after alternative methods of resolving them have been considered and tried. A quote there from Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. Hi there. Welcome to Dispute Management in a New World podcast, 40 minutes of bi-weekly conversations with Dr. Christopher Malcolm, dispute management practitioner, academician, international legal consultant, entrepreneurial visionary, and secretary general of the Jamaica International Arbitration Center. J-A-I-A-C. I'm your host, Anika Nelson. Dr. Malcolm, before we get into the topic, which is COVID-19 and the dispute management pandemic implications, why don't you begin by just reminding us what dispute management involves? Dispute management involves a process where parties are able to put measures in place that will allow them from the moment they conceptualize anything at all to the moment they end up resolving any disputes that could happen being dealt with. So what it is, it's a process mm -hmm. and not an event. So in this process, for example, if you're entering into an, a contract, for example, as a mm -hmm. good example, mm -hmm. what you will start with is the moment you think of that, you will now start thinking of negotiating the terms of that contract. So the dispute management process is one which allows you in the negotiation process to determine what the critical elements are that you would like to have included that will prevent disputes from happening, or if they do happen, to ensure that you have a seamless or well thought out process for resolving them. Dr. Malcolm, COVID-19 would have presented some unique challenges um, for dispute management and dispute resolution. So talk to us a little bit about what you have seen as some of those challenges for dispute management. But COVID-19, what COVID-19 did is that it presented us with challenges that we've never planned for. Nobody expected that we would have had a virus coming around that would have created the level of global havoc that it has. So with the best of intentions, quite frankly, persons would have been planning for disputes if they did properly with questions of frustration by reference to acts of God, hurricanes, earthquakes, and those things in mind. But nobody would have been planning as such for something where at the core of the problem was a virus which nobody had thought about one or nobody even understands even today as to how it could manifest and morph and so on. Mm -hmm. So what COVID-19 has done is caused us to now go back into that realm of trying to figure out how best to deal with the problems that are emerging, some of which we have never thought about. And what is interesting about this COVID-19 pandemic as we follow it, is that every time you think you have crossed a hurdle, others are presented. So it is a consistent and continuing process of trying to adapt and to make adjustments. And in critical times, if you think about it, Dispute management is what works in these circumstances because what management is supposed to do, if you do it well, is that you devise systems that are sufficiently flexible and adaptable mm -hmm. to deal with change, even if the change that comes about is not what you had anticipated. If you had to take three takeaways from the last year and a half, what would those be? The first takeaway is that we should, we should, we should think a little less of dispute resolution as an event mm -hmm. and think of management as a process, which includes resolution. That's, that's one of the things I suppose I've been speaking about for a long time and others have been in fairness mm -hmm. over time. But I think what that has done is say to us, let us concentrate on understanding that dispute resolution is part of a process. So I think that's the first critical takeaway. The next critical takeaway is that we have learned through this process that a lot of the traditional ways of resolving disputes no longer work or work mm -hmm. as well. So let us, for example, think of litigation or arbitration or those processes which are very adversarial by nature. What we saw as the dispute came around where we saw court systems which at for one point across the globe, they were either shuttered or they had scaled back significantly. Mm -hmm. And even now, the processes still are scaled back. Mm -hmm. because you have not been able to have the flexibility of the typical face-to-face -face resolution processes that we had become accustomed to. We have also had to, in that process, pivot a lot to using online systems in ways which we had not thought about before. Mm 
So that is another takeaway that I think is critical. And perhaps the most important takeaway for me out of this is to see how it is that we can pivot to becoming a lot more accommodating by way of conciliation and, 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 and more ameliorative ways of resolving dispute. Therefore, the pivot away from things like arbitration, litigation, and so on, to things in the nature of mediation, facilitated contract renegotiation, and those mechanisms that are ideally suited to getting people together where they understand that we have common problems, mm. which none of us really brought about, and we need to find common solutions that can help us to move forward in un uncertain times. Did the COVID-19 pandemic solidify or uh, amplify the need for dispute management inclusion in business? I think it did actually, because as I said, prior to this, the management nature of disputes was not as critical in person's thoughts. The typical approach was, for example, to a contract is that you enter into a contract, mm -hmm. you hope it goes well. Mm -hmm. And if it goes badly, mm -hmm. you resort to traditional methods of resolving it, which typically included litigation, course, right. arbitration, and so on. What has happened now is that businesses are recognizing that those traditional methods are not as available, mm -hmm. and even if available, may not be able to help you as well as they had before. So businesses now, at least the, the, the ones that are most proactive, have now had to be thinking, what else can we do? And how else can we go back into that sandbox mm. to try to figure out ways of resolving our disputes, which inevitably happen, without having to rely on processes over which we have not as much control as we did before, and which are becoming more and more evident as solutions that are not as good as they used to be. COVID-19 dispute management pandemic. Yeah. What is that? Well, the pandemic simply is this. You know, when you think of a pandemic, in this instance, we thought of a pandemic as COVID-19 pandemic related to the in and out of quotes illness of it. Yes? Right. However, for those of us who are in the area of business and law and so on, we recognize that the nature of life is one where as, in, as we say, for example, in Jamaica, teeth and tongue will always meet, right? Mm -hmm. So the possibility always exists, whether it is in personal relationships, business relationships, cross-border country-related relationships. Mm -hmm. There are always disputes happening. And if they're not happening, they're always a step away from happening. So what has happened here is that with COVID-19 having thrown everything out, of the mix. Mm -hmm. You had business continuity being affected. So, for example, persons, for example, may have ordered, let's say you ordered a bale of cotton from Louisiana. Let's just mm -hmm. say that, for mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. that means. And in the process, shipping lines were interrupted or yes. some such thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you now had contracts which were not capable of being performed the way they could have been performed ordinarily. So persons now had to realize that, look, what we have happening is a realization that disputes that were not planned for are happening and likely to have more of it. Mm -hmm. And the pandemic flows from that in that we are now having more and more and a multiplier of disputes. And what is interesting about disputes is that very often at the time you think about them is not necessarily when they manifest in a problem. That's correct. So we are looking at what is already happening mm -hmm. and looking at what could be happening coming down the pipeline. So it is in that context that we have to think of the pandemic by reference to the multiplier effect and the amount of them that we're dealing with, by reference also to the fact of the unknown that we have not yet even considered. We have seen over the last year or so, as the pandemic progressed, we have seen opening up of economies a little more. We have mm -hmm. seen instances where the, the statistics are saying that businesses are coming back. However, even if businesses were to come back, we already have statistics that say we have a long wait right. to getting back to the levels of growth and development that we had before and that we are hoping for. But even if they do come back, you are going to have businesses that went under. Hmm. You are going to have contractual yeah. and other relationships that have become strained. Yes. And guess what happens? At the end of the day, everybody in that chain would have suffered loss at one level or another. And what dispute management effectively is about is finding an effective way to distribute losses. Mm. So where you have multiplier effect of losses being sustained, the question is, do I suck up the loss or do I try to find a way to pass it on to somebody else? Who I, how do I redistribute mm. 
-hmm. possible losses away from myself to somebody else. And you can bet your bottom dollar that the other persons are thinking the same way. So if that is happening, it is a matter of time, if not yet realized, before you're going to see more and more of it. And guess what? In the nature of contractual or other relationships, insofar as the court systems and so on are concerned, mm -hmm. you usually have a limitation of time within which to bring your causes of action. So you are going to have certainly by the end of those limitation of, 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 of action time periods, person saying, boy, we must get this thing over. In. Even if it is to file something. Yes. And we are seeing and have seen globally that we have seen a lot of matters being filed in courts which have direct linkage to the COVID-19 pandemic. Give us your best advice. What should businesses be doing now to ensure that they are not as adversely affected by the pandemic? Well, I, I'll give some advice which I give with or without a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the first bit of advice I ordinarily give to people, which I think is even more more, more to the fore now than before, mm -hmm. is that you should, on a consistent basis, have what I consider an audit of your contractual and related activities. And that is to say, persons enter into contracts, for example, be they ent en employment contracts, be they supply chain contracts, mm -hmm. and so on. And it is unfortunate that there are so many persons who simply pick up a template and continue to use the thing day in, day out, even with changes in the law, That's true. changes in all sorts of circumstances around us. So I think the first mm -hmm. thing that anybody should do, not just now, mm -hmm. but always, is to find a way to have a continuous process of aud auditing your contractual and related activities. Mm -hmm. Once you do the audit, you will then recognize what your areas of deficits are. So having recognized them, the critical thing to thereafter do is to put measures in place mm -hmm. to ensure that you're able to deal with deficits that have arisen and to also take measures that will help you going forward to perform better today, tomorrow than you did today. And that's part of the process of, of, of engaging. And I think businesses should do that and recognize as well that disputes and considerations for dispute management are not really, or should never be in any event, back end things that you think of when disputes arise. Mm. But you should put measures in place. And that is where management rather than resolution becomes so critical. You put measures in place that will help you to avoid, as we said earlier, yes. and to deal with when they manifest. Yes. And that is what businesses should really be focusing on in a significant way at this time. Every business needs to deal with dispute management. What the realities of particular businesses are will change. Mm -hmm. But as I said, in any personal relationship, you and I are speaking, let's say we're good friends. Mm -hmm. we, it, is, it is unlikely that we're going to go through our lives together as good friends without having disputes arising between us. And the same thing happens in the context of businesses. Mm -hmm. However close the business relationship is, you're going to have situations where the business continues without there being any disputes at all. So businesses at every level should think about it. But what businesses should do, as I like to say, is to find an effective way of dealing with those disputes. What should you do? Hmm. And again, getting back to a very basic, my very basic approach to contract, which I tell people, is that contract really centers around three things, eh? three letters. And I like to think of them as I am, very biblical. Mm -hmm. And the I am is that in every course of dealing, you should first, when you're entering into any relationship, Think about identifying the likely risks, which will include dispute-related risks. Right. Having identified them, you find an effective way, if you can, through your arrangements, to allocate those risks. Mm -hmm. And then having allocated them, you then also put measures in place that will help you to manage or mitigate those risks. So it's a risk management approach, mm -hmm. which has dispute resolution at the core. I want to remind you that you are listening to the JAIAC's Dispute Management in the New World podcast, Conversations with Dr. Christopher Malcolm. Dr. Malcolm, your note about reviewing contracts is an essential one, an important one. But just before we go further, can you differentiate for us the difference between dispute management and dispute resolution? Okay, getting back to where I started, but to clarify it a little more. Mm -hmm. Dispute management is a process which includes various elements. Mm -hmm. The first, ele and if we go back to what I just said yes. about I am, yes. and we're thinking about identification, allocation, management. Mm -hmm. All of that speaks to management process, you know, right. because whatever you're doing, if you're in banking and compliance, 
if you're in whatever, we're always in a risk-based environment mm -hmm. where we're trying to find effective ways of identification, allocation, and management. Mm -hmm. So what dispute management does is to think now of dispute as the critical problem that could arise. Mm. Then you think now of what you need to do at the various stages that you go through a transaction to ensure that you have effective things in place. So as I so let's take a typical transaction, let's say of somebody entering into a contract to build a house. Mm -hmm. Now in the building of that house, let's just say you have an owner and a single contractor that they're dealing with. At the start of that relationship, the owner or the person seeking to develop the house will say, I want to build four rooms and I want it to be 3,000 square feet or whatever the case may right. be. And in that relationship, the contractor is going to say, well, you know, I can build it for you. Mm -hmm. Here's my cost. Here are the things that I need. Now, in that process of bartering or negotiating that you're having, the parties are now trying to settle on the terms of their contract. Yes. So at that point, if you don't get people talking to each other and resolving things before the disputes happen, you're in a real problem. Because when the dispute arises, somebody is going to feel that I have the right. Mm. And that person is unlikely to easily give up their rights. So at that point in a management process, when the negotiation is happening, you then say, OK, fine, let us try to figure out. What are some of the problems that could arise down the road? Mm. The price of cement might change. Mm. The price of labor might change. How do we lock that in? Or how do we put effective systems in place to deal with those adjustments? Okay. And then you start putting terms in place. So what happens? Let us stick with that for the minute. Mm -hmm. Let's say the price of cement changes. Right. Your first thing to say is, what did we agree about how the price of cement should be dealt with? Right. And what you would have done there, you know, is put a measure in place which sort of thought forward about the possibility right. of a dispute and how to deal with it and how right. to manage it. So you are now at the front end, putting in terms of your, in your contract, which are dispute management related. Yes. But let's go a little further. Let's say now the price of the cement has actually changed and it now has implications for the cost of building the project. Yes. You can now put measures in place that say in the event that that were to happen, we want to use a process where we talk to each other amicably. And if we fail to find a resolution between us, we could think of John Brown using his good offices to help us to come to a solution. And what are you doing there? You're putting in another step in the process to help you to manage a dispute when it actually arises, mm -hmm. right? Then you now start to think about what else is likely to happen at the end. Let's say you go through that process of talking, nothing happens. Then you can say that in the event we go through this process, nothing happens, we may end up in litigation. We may end up in arbitration. But what you've done there is that you have gone through the process of identification, allocation of risks, and management of it. However, mm. when we get to that final stage of resolution, and remember, we're now saying that all of that is part of that dispute res management, management processing. Process. Mm -hmm. When you get to that final stage of resolution, you now could find that it is an adversarial process. It is an amicable process. It could be any type of process. But the important point I'm trying to make is that resolution is merely a component of management. Yes. So it's a much narrower concept, which is already included if you think of management in a holistic way. Talk to us about the JAIAC's role in dispute management and what, what, what are some of the services that you would offer to help businesses? In that place? Well, the Jamaica International Arbitration Center, JAIAC, was established with, a, with dispute management as its focus. Mm -hmm. It was never established primarily with dispute resolution as a focus. And so what we have operating through it are a number of management processes that are available to parties who may have disputes. Mm. So in that, you have mediation available, you have conciliation available, arbitration available, and a host of other things that the parties can themselves arrive at. So what the JAIAC has, has, has going for it is that it has been set up from within the Caribbean to serve the region, but geared also to deal with international parties from without the region as well. So what parties are able to do here 
is to register their disputes and have them administered through the JAIC mm. by reference to its own rules that have been developed. So the JAIC has developed its own rules, which are geared to, 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 to management of arbitrations, mediations, and so on. Mm -hmm. And that is what happens in the process in terms of where we go, right? So that is the JAIC for that. Now, how do you get in touch with the JAIC, which is perhaps the other part that you've mm -hmm. asked about? The JAIC has a website, and that is jaiac.org. You can log into that, see the range of services that are offered, and in that range as well, there are persons who operate as party neutrals who are able to assist and be called upon to, to, to help parties as arbitrators, mediators, and so on in the process. So that is where the JAIC comes in. Mm -hmm. And there's also a number you can call if you're there, 876 416-5390 is a number that is also available for getting in contact with the JAIC. But the short of it, getting back to where we were, mm -hmm. is that the JAIC recognized very early that dispute management is a critical thing and recognized as well that in our context as a region, we need to ensure that we understand disputes well, we understand the inimical impact that they can have if not properly dealt with. Mm. And we need to have effective systems in place which rely on our own, as well as our external relationships to work and to work effectively. And that is what the JAIAC is about. It is about having been set up as it was, as a not-for-profit entity, with a view to seeing how we can understand and assist parties to better resolve disputes. My position, of course, on this is that if disputes are not properly resolved, however small they may be, the society as a whole runs into no ends of problems. Mm. And, you know, one of the things that we need to do, and I remind persons and myself all the time, I remembered when there were the LA riots with Rodney King and yes. all of that happening. And, you know, Rodney King said something which stuck with me, and it still is. When he was there and all the LA was burning, his simple position was this. Why can't we all get along? And that was the core Why can't of we? understanding the amicable nature that we should build into our relationships. Mm. Because the truth is that fighting sometimes becomes necessary, and we're not going to say it never is. Mm -hmm. But if you can avoid having to fight, you're always in a better position if you can talk to us. Why? Because if you fight less, you're better able to retain relationships. The more you fight, the greater the chance of getting people to a point where they will see you on the left side of the road and decide to walk on the right because they want to have nothing to do with you. Mm. And that cannot augur well for communities. And the world is a community. Yes, it we have is. small communities in our villages, in our countries, and so on. It but is. we have seen everybody talking about the global community. And we are. Everything is connected one way or the other. And the better we are able to resolve disputes by reference to communal type arrangements, and by reference to relationships which are geared to amicable rather than adversarial processes, the better we are. And the JAIAC enables that. Dr. Malcolm, back in August 2020, the JAIC hosted a discussion and capacity building coffee time series online on a similar topic. You had some astounding guests, Francis Xavier, Lucy Reed, and Robert Vaughan, whose individual and collective experiences are capacity deep and jurisdictionally broad. Let's take a look at a short clip from it. Now, to start it off, and it was a little difficult to see how we got to this point, I will ask Francis really to lay the ground for what it is that he sees as some of the challenges that are out there in the field at the moment and how it is that he thinks we can, in a very short way, look to that and then we'll take the reasoning from there. Francis? In the face of this uh, unprecedented, what Sharon called the disputes pandemic, uh, which is coming, what we have in, in a common law country like Jamaica, uh, across the world, and we have the concepts of force majeure, uh, we have the concepts of frustration, uh, and in court countries, of course, we have a similar concept uh, to force majeure. Uh, but, you know, the, these concepts are simply not designed to deal with what we are facing. It's designed to deal with extraordinary, you know, one contract or a series of contracts 
um, that may be affected, but not on this scale, right? And so what do we do? Um, so first of all, I think many countries across the globe have tried to at least halt uh, or put, put on a moratorium uh, to, to have a suspensory effect on commerce. Um, so, you know, we have got, you know, uh, many, many countries, Germany, Australia, Singapore, uh, the UK, as an example, um, we've, we've called a moratorium. That is, you know, you can't proceed with insolvency proceedings, bankruptcy proceedings, um, and they've also gone ahead to try and regulate commerce, right? So in Singapore, we've got measures which say, um, you know, uh, tenants, commercial tenants get, you know, effectively three months off without paying rent during a period of say six months or, or nine months. Uh, but really the question for us is what's, because con uh, countries are grappling with the problem as it's unraveling. We, we never expected to be in the grip of the pandemic in August. We, we still are in the grip of the pandemic and we don't know how long it's gonna last. And so looking ahead, uh, Christopher, I think the question is, I think one thing is clear, right? Our laws as designed, our courts as designed are ill-equipped to deal with this tsunami. Wow, definitely lots to consider there. Of course, persons can visit the JAIC's website and YouTube channel for the full length of the Coffee Time video. Dr. Malcolm, what are some of the dispute management measures that could be adopted going forward? One of the most important things that we could do is to think of the greater use of mediation, conciliation, and those processes that are less adversarial than the typical court system process of litigation that we have been used to. And uh, mediation in particular is important because what it is, is that it is a process which recognizes that power remains with the parties, albeit with the assistance of a third party who can help them to resolve their disputes without having to be at loggerheads with each other. When parties engage in a process of contracting, for example, I mentioned earlier that there's a negotiation process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most persons might understand or have an idea of what negotiation is. Negotiation really is a process of backing and forthing between parties as they try to arrive at solutions that are best able to satisfy their needs. Mm -hmm. But in that process, the parties are dealing directly with each other. And even if there are other persons involved in it, those persons would essentially be their servants or their agents, as we think of it as a matter of law. Persons acting on their behalf, mm -hmm. but the process is theirs. They own it. Right. And no decision can be made without them being the parties. Now, it is recognized, however, that there are instances where you can introduce a third party to assist that process, who then comes in not to be a decision maker, but instead to facilitate or enable the parties to better engage with each other. So what mediation is, mm -hmm. is a process of applied negotiation. And in that process of application, what the mediator is intending to do is to try to get the parties to understand their individual positions. Why I think I'm right, why you think you're right, and then to introduce alternatives and possible ways that we can be starting to think about it together. So what we try, they try to do in the context of mediation is to help parties to understand their positions, mm. but to understand that it is better for them if they focus instead of what is in their best individual and mutual interests. So mediators try to help parties to move away from established positions to mutually inclusive interest-based positions that can help them to resolve a dispute and to move forward. It is critical, however, that I, that I, that I re-emphasize that in that process, the mediator is serving essentially as a facilitator to help the parties to do what they need to do in their own best interest. Keep them on track. Keep them on track, but is not there to try to take over the process. Okay. It is not fair, however, to think 
that the mediator is simply there as a stool. Mm. The mediator is not. The mediator will be trying and using a number of developed psychological and other techniques to help the parties to better understand how they may be able to see eye to eye. We need to go back a little bit now to the webinar series. Yes. What were some of the other takeaways from that? The other takeaways I think coming out of it is that in addition to mediation, there's also a process of facilitated contract renegotiation, which is critical for consideration. Let me, let me quickly hasten to sort of clarify that a bit as well. Mm -hmm. In the context of mediation that I just spoke about, mediation arises at a, at a point where there is a recognition by the parties that there is something that has already gone wrong and that there is fault that can be ascribed to one party or another. Right. In the context, however, of facilitated renegotiation, you do not start from a position of fault. You start from a position of recognizing that we need to preempt the process of the dispute and to try to find a way to recognize that the arrangement that we had in place on the contract, for example, is no longer working the way we wanted it to. So the contract, the facilitator in that process, then comes in in a mediator type role in that he's not there to make a decision but to assist the parties as well, mm -hmm. but instead to say to the parties, let us see how we can re-examine the terms of your contract, see what has gone wrong, and to see how we may be able to make appropriate amendments to the contract that will enable you to move forward and beyond the difficulties that we already see happening or that could happen. So that is the basic distinction. But at the end, the process is also one which is conciliatory by nature mm -hmm. and one which is geared to getting the parties to themselves remain the masters of their own destinies. Interesting. Excellent points there, Doc. Dr. Malcolm, you would have shared also with us about dispute management, the need, the necessity um, for dispute management in businesses. Is there particular reasons why we're focusing on businesses? Even though we're talking business, because it is in the context here of seeing how it is that we can get our economies working. What we're speaking about and how it applies, applies also at the individual level. Mm -hmm. Because we all as individuals need to recognize similarly that our lives are centered around teeth and tongue meeting, as we say in Jamaica. Yes. yes. And because teeth and tongue is going to meet, it is important for us to try to identify the risks that could lead in an individual relationship to teeth and tongue meeting. Mm -hmm. To try to find a way in our individual relationships to see who should have responsibility or allocation of who should have responsibility for doing what. And then to ultimately determine that if somebody falls off yes. the track and doesn't do what he or she is supposed to do, here is how we're going to resolve it. Dr. Malcolm, that's an interesting point in which to end this series episode. You've given us some useful tips. We've spoken about dispute management. We've clarified dispute management and dispute resolution. And you've also given us um, a, a, a go-home tip. Contract review. Now is the time. Before we wrap things up, tell us a little bit about how it is that folks can contact the JEIAC. The Jamaica International Arbitration Center, from Jamaica and the Caribbean to the world. We are available to assist persons both locally and internationally. And to get access to the services, persons may simply go online to jaiac.org and there you will find all the information that you need about how the JAIAC functions, what its services are, how its neutrals operate, and a host of other valuable information. In addition, persons may also call 876-416-5390. And I could add as well at this juncture that the JAIAC has also implemented and I'm sure we will speak about that on some other occasion, an iNeutral platform, which is available on the JAIAC website, but persons can go to that directly at iNeutral, I-N-E-U-T-R-A-L dot J-A-I-A-C dot O-R-G. And there you will find a whole new world of how you're able to use the online dispute resolution system that the JAIAC has implemented. Thank you very much, Anika.
So like we did in the beginning, we're going to wrap things up with a repeat of today's quote. And it says, the courts of a country should never be the places where resolution of disputes begin. They should be the places where disputes end after alternative methods of resolving them have been considered and tried. That's a quote from Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. Please remember to tune in to our next podcast series episode for part two of our dispute management pandemic implications. Available on Sprout. Podbean, Spreaker, and the JAIAC's YouTube channel. Until then, I'm Anika Nelson. On behalf of Dr. Christopher Malcolm, thanking you for joining us. What words come to mind when you hear dispute management? Procedure, resolution process, tribunal, economic development. And what are some of the underlying industries that use dispute management? Construction, for instance. Insurance, maritime, trade, investment, sports, and intellectual property are just a few. This program is produced with a kind sponsorship of the Jamaica Deposit Insurance Corporation, JDIC, protecting deposits for you and me. I save because one day my little business is going to be a big deal. Yeah. And I make sure to put away a little something for him. And thanks to JDIC, deposit insurance protection on my savings gone up. You've been upgraded. Deposits held in commercial banks, building societies, and merchant banks are covered under the JDIC deposit insurance scheme up to $1.2 million per depositor per institution. JDIC. Protecting deposits for you and me. Special thanks to ADEB Consultants Limited, consulting engineers practicing for over 40 years. iNeutral, dispute resolution made easy. CP Malcolm Dispute Management Practitioner. Caribbean Institute of Alternative Dispute Resolution Limited, CIADR. Mona Law Faculty, the University of the West Indies, Mona. Impact Justice, improved access to justice in the Caribbean. Stay tuned to all our podcast episodes exploring the concept of dispute management, its appropriate use, options for stability in business relationships, and how it supports sustainable economic development. All our podcast episodes are distributed by these platforms, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Deezer, Stitcher, Podcast Index, Pandora, TuneIn Plus Alexa, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, and wherever else you get your favorite podcasts.